All right, welcome back again. On this video, we shall be studying the topic application of determinant and matrices. Under this topic, the first thing that comes you can see over here is consistent and inconsistent equation. Well, okay, what do you mean by consistent system? A consistent system is nothing more than containing uh, one solution or more than one solution. In short, there should be at least a solution over here that is for a consistent system. Similarly, for an inconsistent system, an equation should have no solution. To remember, for a consistent system, there should be two answers it may be one solution or it may be more than one solution and for inconsistent system the answer lies that there should be no solution all right uh, then the next topic uh, that comes under here is nothing more than solution of the topic that will be here it will be solution of system of linear equation using inverse of matrix remember we're going to use solution of system of linear equation using inverse of matrix all right now consider consider the system having Equation, let me just say uh, A1x plus B1y plus C1z is equal to D1, A2x plus B2y plus C2z is equal to D2, A3x plus B3y plus C3z is equal to D3. I'm just considering any system of equation. All right, then let me just say that let your A be all the coefficient of x y and z under one matrix so the coefficient of your x would be nothing more than your a1 coefficient of y b1 coefficient of z c1 similarly a2 b2 c2 a3 b3 c3 Do remember i'm talking here about the coefficient not the cofactor all right then then your x your x would be the value of x y and z that's your x y z and comes b your b should be whatever is there after an equal to sign so that's your d1 for equation number one d2 and d3 all right thus for the above equation the given system of equation the given system of equation can be written as it can be written as nothing more than this one a1 b1 c1 a2 b2 c2 a3 b3 c3 and then x y z is equal to d1 d2 d3 that is this whole thing is nothing more than your a this whole thing is nothing more than your x and this whole thing is nothing more than your b if you solve this one using uh, multiplication matrix you should be getting nothing more than this one the whole thing In, all right so that is if you solve this one you'll be getting this one okay as we got ax is equal to b so following cases arises there will be three cases the first case case number one your case number one would be nothing more than when determinant of a not equal to zero so in this case as we know from the definition of an inverse that if determinant of a is not equal to zero that means your a inverse exist so therefore 
as given that ax is equal to b, now we're going to do pre-multiplying. A inverse on both sides. We get, so if we pre multiply A inverse on both sides, we will be getting nothing more than this one. A inverse AX is equal to A inverse B. I'll be clear till there. Your A inverse A would be IX and your A inverse B. So that will be your X is equal to your A inverse B. After that, since A inverse is unique, the given system has a unique solution. And this one, this one, that's your X is equal to A inverse B. This is the formula of finding the value of x, y, and z, which we will be doing later on the equation. That's your problem, okay? So, just go for this one. That's the case number one. So, thus, I can say that, thus, uh, when the domain of A not equal to zero, then the given system is consistent and has unique solution that's all about your case number one why this is why this system of equation is consistent because it will contain at least one or more than one solution i hope you're clear till there so that's for us for your case number one let me go back to your case number two your case number two uh it's it will be when see for the case number one, we did when your determinant of A not equal to zero. So let me go with the determinant of A equal to zero and a join of A into B not equal to zero. So in this case, the given system is consistent and Sorry, is inconsistent. Why inconsistent? Because a join of A into B is not equal to zero. So that's why it's inconsistent and it has no solution. All right. Similarly, case number three. Your case number three would be when the determinant of A is equal to zero and a join of A b is also equal to zero in this case the given system has infinitely many solution all right so this is all about your case number one two and three all right uh, before I go any further, your main focus should be on case number one. Okay, your case number one, your main focus should be over here. This one. Why? Because this is the method. I'll say this method of solving is known as, is known as nothing more than your matrix method so that's why it's very much important okay number one your case number two and case number three implies only from question number one to question number six okay but main focus should be over here and how to find inverse a inverse i hope you know it if you don't know it don't worry it will be popping up with your video just look over there or you can see the previous video how to solve over there clear Okay, let us start doing the exercise. Let's give exercise 4.6. Examine the constituency of the system of equation in exercise 1 to 6. The first one is given to be x plus 2y is equal to 2 and 2x plus 3y is equal to 3. Now, before I begin over this one, 
there's a note which will be popping out the video. If you can see, over there the note, you have to solve it by nothing more than your matrix method. That is AX is equal to your B. So, over here, I can say that the system of equation can be written as the system of equation can be written as nothing more than what ax is equal to b where your a is nothing more than same thing the coefficient term before x and y so what are they that's nothing more than one two two three x is equal to nothing more than your x y and b is equal to two three then let me just find what is the determinant of a if i find the determinant of a it will be three ones are three two man two twos are four so which is minus one not equal to zero so not equal to zero it indicates that a is non-singular non-singular means therefore your a inverse exists and if your a, a inverse exists i can say that hence the system of equation are consistent all right okay let me jump to question number three question number three is given to be x plus 3y is equal to 5 and 2x minus 6y is equal to 8 here also same thing the system of equation the system of equation can be written as ax is equal to b where your a happens to be 1 3 to 6 your x same thing your x and y and your b happens to be 5 8 just like your previous question where after this i got this and after that i find determinant of a same thing i'm going to find over here that's nothing more than your determinant of a so if i find determinant of a so that will be of a is equal to 6 1 6 minus 3 to the 6 which happens to be 0 now if I got 0 that means your a is a singular matrix and a inverse does not exist I hope you know what you mean by singular matrix if you don't know please go ahead to the previous video you'll get it over there now if you, if you can look over there in some cases I got the determinant of a not uh, equal to zero so it will be case two or case three so let me just find what is a join of a first so if you can look over here before i find a join of a your a happens to be one three two six now after you solve a join of a you will get the answer nothing more than six minus three minus two one i did it directly please go ahead and then solve it okay so your a join of a into b which would be 6 minus 3 minus 2 1 your b happens to be nothing more than 5 8 so use multiplication method so 6 5 is a 30 minus 18 minus it will be minus 10 8 1 is 8 plus 8 which would be 6 minus 2 now 6 minus 2 is nothing is not equal to 0 so that will be nothing more than your case number 2 so i can say that so there is no solution why no solution because a inver uh, your determinant of a happens to be called zero of the given system of equation of the given system of equation so hence the system of equation are nothing more than your in consistent remember it's inconsistent okay why inconsistent because we got no solution and i got a join of a into b not equal to zero all right the next question is given that soft system of linear equation using matrix method in exercise 6 till 14 uh, so i'm gonna do question number seven using nothing more than your matrix method okay so i can say that here uh, 
E. Your E is whatever is there before your X and Y. So that will be 5, 2, 7, 3. And comes your X. Your X is nothing more than your X, Y. And comes your B. Your B is 4 and 5. Before we do the matrix method, we just have to prove whether A inverse exists or not. So in order to find whether A inverse exists, I have to find the determinant of A first. The determinant of A would be 5, 3 is a 15 minus 14, which happens to be 1, not equal to 0. Not equal to 0, it means that, that is your A is non-singular. If non-singular, that means I can say that, I can say your A inverse exists. So if your A inverse exists, then I have to find a join of A. In order to find a join of A, I have to find first what is A11. Your A11 would be 3. Your A12 would be minus 7. Your A21 would be minus 2. And your A22, uh, I think, it would be 5. So therefore, your a join of A would be nothing more than a11, a12, a21, a22. So which would be a11 is 3 minus 7 minus 2, 5. So therefore, your A inverse, the formula for inverse is 1 by the domain of A, a join of A, so which would be 1 by 1, and then I got 3 minus 7 minus 2, 5. I hope you are clear till there. Now, as the question says, we have to use matrix method. So therefore, uh, according to matrix method, we, uh, it will be, so that is, um, x is equal to your A inverse B. So what is, what was x actually? It's x and y. So that will be x, y, your A inverse, I got it to be nothing more than 3 minus 7 minus 2, 5, and your B. Your B happens to be 4, 5. So that will be 4, 5. 5. So let me just simply multiply. So if I multiply, I will get 3 4 is a 12 minus 10 minus 28 plus 25. So which would be 2 and then minus 3. So that's the value for your x and y. So that is, I can say that. So hence, I can say the value for x happens to be 2 and the value for y happens to be minus 3. So this is how we're going to solve it by matrix method. If you can see, I'll just summarize once again. I just have to make this one uh, in what form? In nothing more than your AX is equal to B form. I hope you're clear until there. So this is the form AX is equal to B. So here A is equal to this one. B, X is equal to that. B is equal to this. Then in order to find a inverse, I have to first of all find that the domain of A is not equal to 0. So after that, I have to find the adjoint of A. Then simply go ahead. <clears throat> Alright, let us do question number 12 again. The question number 12 is a little bit different than question number 7. Why? Because question number 7, we got only two equations. Over here in question number 12, we got three equations. Okay, so here also the same thing. The given system. The given system of equation. can be written as AX is equal to B. This one, your AX is equal to B, and this line, I forgot to write down in question number 7. If you write down also, it's okay. If you forgot also, it's okay. Because in maths, the answer matters, right? Not the writings. Huh? So it's given that the given system of equation can be written in the form AX is equal to B. So where your a your a happens to be the coefficient term before x so that will be 1 minus 1 1 2 1 minus 3 1 1 1 then your x i got one more extra term that's x y and z and your b your b happens to be whatever there whatever is there of an equal to sign it's 4 0 2 I guess we're clear until there. So before we're finding A inverse, I have to find that the determinant of A is not equal to what? Zero. So that will be one. One means this and this is gone. So that will be one minus three, one, one. Then minus, minus one. I'm taking this three again, the first row. So that will be 
2 minus 3, 1, 1, and lastly plus 1, so which would be uh, 2, 1, 1, 1. So which would be nothing more than 1, 1 plus 3, plus 1, 2 plus 3, plus 1 again, 2 minus 1. So which would be uh, 4 plus 5 plus 1, which happens to be 10. 10 means not equal to 0. So that is your A is non-singular, non-singular, and I can say that your A inverse exists. Now, after I finish over here, let me just put this aside for a time being, then I have to find that uh, your a join of A. So in order to find a join of A, let me just go on with the first A11. Your A11, if you look, I have to remove the first row and the first column, so if I solve it, I'll get the answer for, then comes your A12. Now, just I said, 1 plus 2 is odd, odd means negative, so negative means you know, 1, 2, 1, 2, first row, second column gone, so 2, 1, 2, 3, minus that, so that will be minus 5. Then comes your A13, that will be 1, then comes your A21, again your 2, 1 happens to be minus, so 2, 1, so 1, 1 is a 1, 1 plus, so remember 1 minus 1 is 2, 1. I'm going to repeat once again, it will be minus 1, minus 1, minus 2, so that will be minus 2, so that will be 2. Similarly, your A22 two, two would be 2, 2, solve it, it will be 0, then comes your A23, two, 2, three. Two, three, it's minus, so 2, 3, so that will be nothing more than minus 2. Similarly, your A31, three, one. your 3-1 three, one would be 2, then comes your A32, three, two. your 3-2. Three, two. 3, 2 would be nothing more than a minus of minus 5, so which would be 5, then comes your A, 3, 3, that would be 3. So, therefore, your A inverse, which would be 1 by determinant of A, and then a joint of A. So, your determinant of A, how much you got, if you, you solve it, your determinant of A, you got it to be 10. So, put it over here, so it will be 1 by 10. Then just put the value of this one. So it will be 4 minus 5, 1, 2, 0, minus 2, 2, 5, 3. I hope you are clear again till there. All right, you can solve it, but just keep it this one outside only for time being. Then the next thing would be, uh, so that is your matrix method. That's x is equal to your A inverse B. So how much you got x? Your x you got it to be nothing uh, your x you got it to be nothing more than your x y z so just put the value so that will be x y z you got your a inverse to be this one so which will be 1 by 10 4 minus 5 1 2 0 minus 2 2 5 3 and your b your b you got it to be 4 0 2 so I'll just put it over here 4 0 2 all right so after that I just simply have to do multiplication. So if I do multiplication, this row into column. So I'll get the answer 16 plus 0 plus 4 minus 20 plus 0 plus 10, 4 plus 0 plus 6. I guess okay. clear. So which would be 1 by 10, 16 plus 4 is 20, minus 10, 10. Now just put the value of this one inside the matrix in every column or it's in every row and column same thing so if you put it you'll get the answer nothing more than 2 minus 1 1 so that's the value for your x y z so therefore your x would be 2 y would be minus 1 z would be 1 I guess you're clear you can just look over here This is how we're going to find first of all the A inverse. It should be non singular. Then, after you find your A inverse, you have to find what? You have to find your adjoint of A, which is how you're going to solve it. The adjoint of A, then you got it. That's how you got the answer. 